can see it's a little wet outside there and we're gonna spend the day working in the shop I've got the combine running and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the oil out of this we've got both the chopper and the combine all washed up they changed the oil on the chopper the other day and now we're gonna change the oil on the combine Okay, so we're up in the engine compartment here and I've got a pail set up down below and then all we have is a little quarter turn unit here for an oil plug drain and then um, it uses the crankcase breather as a uh, drain tube. So we've got that draining. Now we will uh, make sure it is actually draining into the pail. Okay, so that is draining. We'll give it some time here and uh, let that drain out. We'll get some filters changed and get some new oil on it. All right, so before we roll into that oil change, uh, we're gonna load up a truck with some refusal feed. A friend of mine has some beef cows and we give uh, the refusal feed to him. So we're going to load him up in a minute here and uh, you might recognize him. This is the Fireman Farmer. He also has a YouTube channel. So we'll turn the camera around we'll start loading him up here. Jamie all loaded up uh, with refusal feed. Now we're going to um, get into the service work on the combine. We're going to run the grease gun around the chopper as well, get the cutter head shut back up on that. And we're also going to do some adjustments and uh, change some things over so that the uh, combine is ready to go right in the wheat next summer. We ended up rolling the straw chopper ahead uh, here the other day when we were washing the combine up, we took that baffle out that sits in the back so that the straw can come off the straw walkers and just fall freely right in behind. The actual straw walker, or the actual uh, chopper itself, that uh, moves forward and backwards. That's usually back here. We just roll it forward for straw. Unless you want to chop the straw, but we want to bale the straw. So we end up dropping the straw right down in behind that. And then we end up bailing it up. So we ended up putting the uh, screens back in uh, that we had out for uh, corn. We put them in so that that's ready for wheat. We've got to change the cylinder speed on it. We've also got to change the uh, feeder house speed. We've got to switch these sprockets around loosen this chain up and get this chain moved over into uh, this sprocket here. We've also got, we also have to raise the drum uh, for straw. You just do that here. You just switch the position around and that's got the drum down right now. So we need to raise that up so that there's a little more room for when the um, wheat and straw and whatever goes into the combine. So. We've got a little bit of work to do here, but we'll go ahead and get started and um, then we can get the combine put into storage and the chopper. I've got this opened up um, just so that I can hit some grease zerks and we threw some green paint on some spots where the um, cutter head and stuff was missing some paint here. so. Um, that's just going to kind of preserve it, keep it from rusting and whatever. And um, I've got a, a drive shaft down in here that I've got to grease. I've got some grease zerks down on the bottom there that I need to get to. That shaft there. 
and that's basically gonna do it for the chopper the oil was already changed on this the other day so uh, we've got the oil draining on the combine here and I need to uh, figure out what filters I need and get them uh, on there all right we are into the following day now uh, we've got the oils and the filters everything's changed on the combine and we're just going over a couple of things with it we had one panel that was wore out that went underneath that feeder house and curve has got that well it's over on the bench we'll show you that here in a minute right now he's putting tires on the white mixer wagon tim went down to uh, Syracuse yesterday he got six recaps and then six or uh, two uh, virgin tires here so we're going to go ahead and get them on or Kerr's going to put them on and then this panel went underneath um, the feeder house chain and he's got a plate welded on the back of that that had a couple of spots that were wore through actually one spot here and then it's getting real thin over there this is where the feeder house re chain returns back on and um, jared's working on his freight liner it got raining here yesterday and um he didn't figure the starter was in that great of shape he ended up taking that out here yesterday and he found out the starter was the original starter and it took quite a bit to get it out. Two out of the three studs had to be heated up and they did not want to come out. He probably worked on this for a couple hours anyways, getting them mongrels out of there. Yeah. Um, he burned up a couple of air lines trying to get the torch down in there. And uh, as you can see, the starter's got some spots on it where... Uh, where he had heated up the studs where they went into the block. Where's the tag that was on it? Tag on the side. I'm gonna look at the part number, but it says it's original. So, but that starter um, was original, so that's uh, got some time on her. So he's gonna fix up some airlines here and um, get a new starter back in there. So as you can see, these tires uh, need replacing. We need to get these off in there before we get down into the wires. We want to uh, recap these again. Probably the best tire on it was that inside one there. So we rebuilt this mixer wagon in February of 2019. And um, we ended up putting new tires on it then. And uh, yeah, so um, we're getting new ones on it again here now. So he's got uh, these four ready to go on here. He's going right to town here, not monkeying around. The other thing that we're working on here as long as we've got the mixer in the shop is this is the bracket that the scale monitor sits on and then we've got just a jam bolt here to uh, tighten up once you turn the scale to where you want and you tighten that up to keep the scale from moving around. This is just a 3 8 bolt with a, oh, just a regular, I've got a roll pin welded to it and um with a 3 8 knot on here now this is stripped the threads off of the bolt and the nut is now the nut doesn't have much left on it for thread so rather than cut the nut off in there what we'll do is we'll ream that hole out and then weld a new nut on top of it and uh Fix the threads. I haven't figured if I'm gonna run a die down this or I'm just gonna cut this bolt off or just make a new one. So we'll go ahead and ream this out 
We've got a car reamer, a 3 8 car reamer on a with a Milwaukee drill here. the same bowl and then what I did was I cut some more threads down that bowl since it's got to be a little longer because of the nut stack down there. And there we go. Alright, so they're getting the last of these tires on. They've got all eight dismounted. They've got the last two right there, which they've got to air up yet. So we've got this panel up in the uh, combine here. And uh, that panel is on the bottom floor of the uh, feeder house here. So we're going to throw a little bit of paint on that. And um, then... Uh, We'll be able to wrap this up here. One other, one other thing that I have to do here is I'm going to replace that hose on the lift cylinder. It's wore down uh, to the metal braiding, and I'm just worried that it's going to start rusting. And then once it starts rusting, it's going to end up rupturing. So that hose there crosses over to. Oh. The cylinder on this side here it just runs up over the top of the um, drive axle there and over to the other side. So we'll go ahead and we'll get that off and make up a new hose. Alright, they've got this job just about done. We'll roll that out the door here. That'll be good for another few thousand miles. And we're going to send these in to get recapped here. Alright, I didn't have the right size hose ends to make a hose for the combine. And while we were working on getting the hose off of the combine, Kaz dropped some parts off for me for this 7290. Uh, Sarah was bush hogging the other day with it, and the alternator belt went on it and what caused the belt to go was the uh, one of the idler pulleys for the um, serpentine belt seized up and it caused the belt to break so we're going to be to the field in a little while here we'll get the parts on that get that belt back on there and maybe she can do some bush hogging here this afternoon we've got about oh uh, what is there 85 acres or so left to um, to do here so we'll be to the field in a minute Alright, so we've got a little bit more work here than anticipated on. So there's a shaft hooking to the bottom of the crankshaft and it comes up front here for 
the PTL that runs off the front of this tractor. So we've got to pull this oil cooler out of here so that we can get this one coupler undone right here so we can slide that shaft out of there. All we need to do is just have, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch room to slide that belt in between the front of the pulley right here and where that coupler bolts on to the front of the crankshaft there. So um, we've got some fasteners on that uh, dampener type coupler there that we need to get to but in order to get to that I'm going to have to pull this cooler out of there. So we're going to unhook some lines and uh, try to roll this out so we can get some uh, fasteners undone here. Okay, so this isn't your typical uh, belt installation project here. Um, this tractor's got the front PTO on it, and that front PTO is driven off of the front of the engine, and the gearbox and everything is setting up here. So we've got to uncouple the shaft down in here that's bolted to the front of the crank in order to get that freaking belt on there. So we've got the cooler removed. I don't know what that cooler there is, if it's a transmission oil cooler or front PTO oil cooler or something. Uh, we've got that unbolted out of there. That set in here all like that. But I had to get that out so that I can get at these uh, fasteners here where this shaft is bolted onto the input shaft of this front gearbox. However, the problem I'm having now is I can't hold that shaft in one spot. I've got to get an impact or something over here to get these uh, fasteners out of there. Then we could just move this shaft a little bit out of the way here so that we could slide our belt in there. But um, as you can see, this has turned into be a little bit more of a job than just uh, replacing the belt so we're gonna run back home now and get an impact I've got limited tools in this truck here I've got just the, the bull mold case that I throw in behind the seat of my truck in that little toolbox there that's all I've got for tools here so um, if I'd have known it was going to turn into this, I knew I had to uncouple this coupler here on the engine, but I thought it was going to turn to one side, kind of like the couplers on the, oh, like a 4020 or, you know, that vintage tractor and uh, allow me to, um, you know, shimmy the belt down through there, but that is not going to do the trick here. So. I'm going to have to throw the panels and stuff back inside the tractor here and um, bring an impact over and get them damn things out of there and then we can get this <laughs> finished up here. Alright, now that we're back to the shop here, we'll make up the hose for the combine header. So I've got one end crimped on, I've just got to crimp this other end yet. put this hose on grab an impact and we'll head over and get the uh, belt on at 7290 all right we've got the hose on here all this hose does is it goes from this left cylinder on this right hand side mounts up through there crosses up over the top and then it goes over to that side now I'll show you the hose that came off and in that little section right there between 
where the fitting goes on the end of the hose and about where that hydraulic drive motor is. They had some of the rubber jacket wore off of the hose. And I just figured that at some point in time that hose is going to give out on us and it's going to be one of the best days of the year to be combining wheat or corn. This uh, plate right here is the plate that we took out and Kerr put a piece of steel on it. The feeder house chain was wore through in that one spot over there. So this should just about finish up what we have to do to the combine here. Now once the roads clear up, we can take this and put it away for the winter. This is the hose that came off. And then as you can see, the rubber jacket is wore off the outside and um, there isn't any burrs there or anything, but generally what happens to this stuff, I think, is it starts to rust out a little bit and then once it starts to rust, those little wire bands end up breaking in the hose and then it gives away like a radial tire does once you uh, puncture the rubber. So we're going to go ahead and um, head on over to the field and work on the 7290. Before we head over to the field, we'll show you what these guys are doing The truck 12. They had a wore out fan housing here. They just put a new one on. This one was wore out. It was leaking manure up at the top. And you can see where the fan had kind of worked through it a little bit. It's real thin right here. And um, yeah, you run into that. So this is the original fan housing that was on this truck. Now they've got a new one on here along with a new hydraulic uh motor and everything else now a while ago the motor that is on that old fan housing there ended up failing and travis swapped that out but this fan here is a little wore out it's probably got a couple hundred miles left on it but um it was due time to get that off in there right New fan housing, new fan. And the other thing they're putting on is they're replacing the load hatch doors. Um, they've got the old one off here, and then they've got the new one that goes on. This one was all wore out. The, there's an air cylinder. This is the back of it. There's an air cylinder on there that closes these flaps together, and the tab broke off this one side. Once you open this air cylinder, it flops these doors down so that the manure can be loaded in the tank. That's in the closed position now. That keeps the manure from coming out. So, I'm going to go and get that 7290 together. Nice. Yeah. So, they're going to go ahead and put that up on there. How's the gasket on top of the tank? That good? Good. Yeah. Okay. I'll leave you guys alone. Looks like you've got the, they did the hard job without me, so I think they can manage to do the easy job without me as well, right? <laughs> yeah. These are a mongrel to put on because you're dealing with the vertical pipe that comes out of the fan there. Did that drop down at all? Did you have to, we had, to wiggle it. had to wiggle it? Yeah. All right, be good. All right, we're back over here. It was spitting a little bit of snow, and as you can see, now we got some snow on the ground. So now we're going to try an impact in on these uh, bolts here. Um, should be able to slide right in there and bang, bang. We should be able to get them out of there. So we'll set you up here, and we'll uh, try to get these bolts out quick before we get another snow burst here.
All right, now we got that off and iron, and hopefully we can just pull this ahead enough. But man, that don't seem to want to move. I don't know if I could turn this a little farther. Maybe there's one more. There ain't five in this, is there? This looks like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, I've got that slid forward, but. <laughs> <laughs> um once i wiggled that around quite a bit got this loose that shaft actually slides in that coupler so i don't know if i actually had to do i don't know if i had to actually take all this apart or not but at any rate it is what it is so i tried sticking a pry bar in there and i couldn't i couldn't pry that much it wouldn't move so i don't i don't know um i don't know if by taking this off in there loosening these bolts up if that had something to do with it here or what but at any rate we might have taken uh too much of this apart so we're gonna fish that belt in there get that on there the right way and start putting this back together okay so we've got the belt all on there now we're gonna hook this coupler back up and we're gonna find out if i actually had to take all this out of there i'm gonna be a little mad at myself if i didn't have to go through all this but at any rate it is what it is so let's start bolting all this stuff back together here uh the belt that i've got on there is a green belt and uh that belt i ended up getting from napa okay so we got this coupler all coupled anybody that has to replace a belt on a 7000 r series tractor with a front pto on it you do not have to do what i just did this shaft slides back and forth i don't know why it wouldn't move earlier uh, i tried prying it away from the harmonic balancer however i couldn't get it to move i didn't want to screw around any farther so um i just started tearing into it so when you replace the fan belt you take those bolts out on the bottom of the harmonic balancer where this shaft bolts on to the crankshaft you just take them bolts out and the shaft slides so i did this work for nothing so i'm gonna start putting her all back together here All right, so the sun is starting to go down. I've got the uh, cooler bolted into place. I've got one more bolt to put in where that shaft bolts up to the um, front of the crankshaft. So we'll go ahead, bump it with the starter. I'm gonna go ahead and put a mark on the, um, oh, I'm gonna put a mark right here so I know where to move that to so I can get that bolt on there. Then we just gotta put this plastic cover on and that is gonna about wrap this up.
All right, folks, that is going to do it for tonight. The sun kind of went down on us as we were finishing up this job. But we got it done. We'll head back to the shop. And that's going to do it. So I want to thank you for watching, and we will catch you at the next one. If you're wondering what this flashlight is, this is an Olight Warrior Mini. Um, I've clipped this right to my hat here, and I finished up the rest of this work. Working on this tractor under great lighting. So that's going to do it, folks. We will catch you at the next one. wonder how many eyes are out here in this field. I don't see any. Sometimes you see the deer come out just as soon as the sun goes down. You can usually spot their eyeballs. <laughs>